Okay, so it's just gone one. Um, welcome, uh, welcome everybody. Uh, welcome you uh, on the tariff guarantees um, for the non-domestic uh, RHI. Uh, we're going to give you a little bit of a policy update. Uh, and then um, Laura Bishop will run through the actual application process. Um, because it's a relatively short topic, uh, we're going to um, delay starting, let people join. So we'll actually start the content at about five past. Um, in the meantime, you'll see on the, uh, on the slide presentation at the moment, this is the schedule for our forthcoming events. Um, we have a, a whole series on the design of closed loop borehole systems. Um, presented by uh, various um, wise heads at the Ground Source Heat Pump Association. Um, so that will uh, will give anybody who is considering uh, closed loop borehole um, solutions, either installers, members of the association, um, potential clients, anybody who is uh, looking at the technology. Um, those that series of four should give you some uh, uh, really good pointers. Um, Today's event, uh, because there is actually no real update yet from the Ministry on the tariff guarantee situation, uh, today's event is very much just an opportunity to run through the current stakeholder notice uh, and, uh, and make sure that the understanding there is, is as good as it can be. Um, a run through on the process so that uh, anybody looking at tariff guarantees at the moment can understand the process. Um, and then it's uh, an opportunity for uh, uh, delegates on the webinar to uh, let us have questions. And they're not actually questions that you'd expect us to answer, but if you've got questions that you think need to be fed back into the ministry, um, this opportunity to do it. Uh, we have teed up our own contacts in the ministry to receive said questions. So, um, without uh, further ado, I think we'll, we'll push on. So, Laura, if you could advance the slides, please. So, non-domestic tariff guarantees. So, the, the policy update as it stands, I'm assuming that uh, most people are aware of uh, the tariff guarantee, second allocation, um, and, and what's happening there. So, the update, um, which is part of the COVID response, it was billed as part of the COVID response, was issued on the 28th of April. There's a link there, and these slides will be available afterwards for anybody who's um, who, who wants to uh, to look at this afterwards. Uh, and there will be a full recording, I think, published on YouTube. So, so there's the link. Um, it was the stakeholder notice, not a full consultation. Um, and the response deadline was the 19th of May, which was very short, obviously, because it wasn't a full consultation. A part of their COVID-19 response. And of course, I think back at that point, we didn't really have any idea what the situation was going to be with, time, with respect to the time scale that COVID was going to continue to affect us all. Um, what it did do was confirm the closure of the non-domestic RHI, as we know it, on the 31st of March next year. Uh, as of this morning, the response to the stakeholder notice will be published in the coming weeks. Um, and that is a problem in itself, of course. Um, next slide, please, Laura. <clears throat> so the, the notice itself, it, it fails to address ground and water source below 100 kilowatts because it talks purely about tariff guarantees and the tariff guarantees only kick in at 100 kilowatts. And of course, it doesn't cover air source heat pumps of any capacity. So there's some real gaps in uh, in the in the rolling program of support for uh, heat pumps uh, uh, as low carbon technologies. Um, it provides no dates for any of the initiatives, which in light of the current digressions is a massive problem. So uh, as of the announcement on the 1st of June, by the 1st of July, we will have seen a cumulative 28% hit on the subsidy support rate tariffs for non-domestic schemes uh, above 100 kilowatts, i.e. everything that is covered by tariff guarantees. It also fails to address the collapse in consumer confidence. Uh, and uh, and you know, whilst it's it was meant to reflect COVID only, of course, the consumer is wrapping up a whole load of things. Closure of the scheme itself, um, COVID, all the risks around COVID, the 
fact that funding now has to be reallocated to other COVID related risks. Um, and so they, the consumer can't separate out all the confidence is really being hit. And we could do with some help from ministry to recover that position. Um, it, as I said, it leaves a hole in the heat pump support for non-qualifying technologies. Uh, and there's no visibility at all of the longer term energy strategy. What we can't really understand is why they didn't buy the time for the heat strategy, which is due later this year, the energy white paper, which we think is still coming this year, but no one seems to be quite sure. Uh, and certainly the building regulations revisions, um, which are probably now going to come into force in Q1 of next year. Again, COVID related delays. So they bought the time with the domestic scheme because there was a straight 12 month extension and there's some visibility of what might come after that for the domestic scheme, although that very much is subject to uh, consultation. Uh, that's another whole topic on its on its own but um but no time to deal with the non-domestic scheme and and every day that passes the damage mounts but the cost of a straight extension reduces because payments are only going to be made until march 2041 so even with a 12-month extension it would mean that uh, anybody qualifying at the end of march 2022 would only get 19 years payments so the cost of of the, the problem is going down, uh, and yet the damage is mounting. And of course, we've only got a finite amount of uh, resource available. Um, next slide, Laura, please. So, on the third allocation of tariff guarantees, and this is the, the this is the COVID response piece. So, um, they're dealing it with uh, proposing to deal with it with an allocation, third allocation of tariff guarantees. Um, there are currently no dates at all, but we assume that the process, the application process and the, the staging will be the same as for TG2. Uh, the flexible bit refers to the ability to select a commissioning and stage three date up to the 31st of March, 2022. Uh, stage two must still be achieved by end of March next year. So stage two has to be uh, done and dusted by the formal closure to the scheme at the end of March. 2021. Uh, payments will be based on that stage two acceptance. So, as I said, potentially reduced to 19 years. Uh, the, the, the one glimmer is that uh, the TG budget headrooms um, uh, have been increased for the two financial years. So we uh, we should make we, we should see that uh, we won't be hitting uh, actual exhaustion of funds. Although, of course, that doesn't mean that we won't get further potential further digressions. Uh, and we are now, of course, investigating whether or not uh, there are likely to be more digressions in the immediate, uh, in the immediate future. Um, there will be a pathway to transition from TG2 to TG3, but that is not yet defined. It will all most certainly include the break from TG2 to TG3 because of timing. Um, uh, then you will almost certainly lose the TG2 uh, tariff rate and be subject to whatever is in play at the time the transitions is made. And then there is likely to be a TG2 deadline, the commissioning deadline um, is likely to be pushed out uh, at the moment, it's said to at least mid-March, which is sort of six to seven weeks potentially for, uh, for people who are holding deadlines, uh, um, commissioning deadlines of January next year. Uh, but given that uh, the industry has now been in partial shutdown for you know, significantly more than six to seven weeks, that is clearly, um, clearly inadequate. Um, so next slide, please. So I think that that's really all we can tell you at the moment on the tariff guarantees. Uh, so I'm going to hand over to Laura and allow her to talk you through the application process. Um, and you know, clearly timing is absolutely critical given that we've got this digression, uh, this super digression kicking in the 1st of July. So um, uh, really important that you understand the process, what's required. Uh, and uh, I'll let Laura talk you, uh, talk you through. Laura, where you go, yep, please. Thanks, Bean. Okay. Um, I think just... Uh... 
uh, something I should have put on the top of the slide is to, just to remind uh, who or what tariff guarantees can be applied for. So they're actually, we already know uh, tariff guarantees are available for ground and water source heat pumps greater than 100 kilowatts, but they also apply to uh, biomass greater than one megawatt, biomass CHP of all sizes, geothermal of all sizes, biogas greater than 600 kilowatts and biomethane plants of all sizes. As Bean has already said, there is no tariff guarantee in place for air source heat pump projects, regardless of the size. So just to, um, just thought it'd be important to um, put this all into context. Um, so the stages, so the three stage process, and it applies whether you're doing uh, water, ground source heat pump, biomass, whatever you're doing, it's the same process. Uh, if anybody has done an RHI application before, uh, the uh, portal and the look of the scheme and the application form is exactly the same as for a normal RHI application. Um, the difference is that uh, the application is actually cut very short for stage one. So the first thing would be to set up your account for your RHI um, system uh, just in the normal way and that includes you know who's going to be taking the RHI payments, uh, business address, personal address, any personal details that is exactly as, as standard. Um, then you will go into you'll start a new application also as standard um, and it will ask you the the normal questions about where where's your plant is it in England, Scotland and Wales, um, what kind of plant is it, is it ground source, is it biomass, is it air source if you click air source uh, and then try to go forward with tariff guarantee it will obviously sorry kick you out and you won't be able to proceed um so the the, the place that it changes is as soon as you put in the commissioning date as being in the future the application will then understand for the preliminary accreditation or a tariff. Then go to just another little page, but you're very clear the planned plant capacity, so it's got more than 100 kilowatts, uh, and your expected annual demand in kilowatt hours. Uh, a brief description of the system this is a text box, so you can talk about. Um, you know what kind of building that you're going to be heating uh, whether it's going to be ineligible heat loads such as very pipe work ineligible heat uh, such as other boilers or electric immersion heaters um, so as much information as you can put in there the better and you also need to then upload either planning permission or a letter of planning exemption for your heat pump system then you would click um, submit and that goes into the stage one review process and that can take um, a few weeks or a few months. I've got jobs that went in on the 31st of March and one of them was approved within about three weeks and one of them was still waiting. And I think it totally depends on who you have reviewing your scheme because the two schemes I put in on that date are very similar. Um, so the, the following stage is the financial close information. And this is still pre installed installation pre-commissioning of your heat pump. Um, as soon as Ofgem have approved or given you a provisional tariff guarantee notice, which is the close out of stage one, they will ask you for information on the financial close of your project. Um, Ofgem haven't prescribed a way of um, producing that information. Uh, so when I Asked them a little bit for a bit more information. Is there a specific way or a template for providing that information? They said no. But essentially, if you condense down what they're looking for, it is evidence of financial close from an independent or not connected person. So it couldn't be a, com a company accountant connected with your company. It would have to be an independent accountant or financial person that has the required qualifications, who is happy to look over any um, information that shows that the money is available to cover the complete cost of the project and it has been allocated to that project so that might be um, a bank loan uh, confirmation or it might be um, uh, information from the company accountant to say that information ha has uh, is available and it has certainly been allocated to the project so you need to have that letter and that has to be submitted within three weeks of receiving the additional tariff guarantee notice um, 
so it's probably worth thinking about that at, before you get to stage one actually to think I've got to have this letter available so who am I going to use to get that information um, uh, reviewed and approved and a letter written. You can submit stage two at the same time as stage one so you can combine the two stages if you've got it all available to start with. Um, at the end of stage two you are given a tariff guarantee notice, a TGN, and that then sits there until you have commissioned your system, at which point you convert the whole thing into a stage three standard RHI application. Um, but obviously, because you've got a TGN tariff that was in force when you got your um, application in stands. So whatever the tariff is at the time of commissioning doesn't matter because you've, you've secured your higher tariff from today. So just uh, one slide, one more slide on the pitfalls, um, having done a few of these tariff guarantee um, applications and also having done lots and lots of RHI applications, uh, here are some of the things that can go wrong. So bear these in mind before you start. First thing is that a tariff guarantee is not guaranteed. Um, so when you put in your stage one application, the first thing I'll put Joan will do is check the available budget for your technology. Um, if there is no budget or not enough budget, you will then be put into a queue and then uh, they will assess uh, each application in turn. So as Bean says, there ha there is, that's unlikely to happen. There, are, there is budget available right now, but uh, you know, the first thing is to say it's not an absolute guarantee that you will get that tariff. After you've filled in stage one and stage two, the things that can potentially trip you up later on is the guarantee, the tariff guarantee can be revoked if any of the following happens. So if your final capacity is plus minus 10% greater than the capacity you put in at stage one, um, your tariff guarantee can be revoked. I don't know, it's not clear whether if say you put in an application for a 100 kilowatt heat pump and then you put in, you actually install a 200 kilowatt heat pump, does that mean that you lose the full uh, tariff guarantee? or does tariff guarantee only apply to 100 kilowatts? They haven't actually made that very clear, but the fact is try to be as accurate as you can when you put in the capacity of your heat pump. So don't go and say, I'm gonna put in a one megawatt heat pump when actually you only need 60 kilowatts because that is gonna trip you up severely later on. Um, if you end up with a heat pump that actually falls just below the 100 kilowatts, then uh, that would also revoke the, um, the tariff guarantee. Um, so it's capacity is such that a different tariff would apply, which obviously is the 100 kilowatts cut off for us at hitting heat pumps. Um, if you don't commission before the date that you state in stage one, um, you can have your guarantee revoked. So make sure that you don't um, underestimate when you're going to be commissioning. So don't say it's going to be commissioned next week when you know full well it's going to be commissioned in 2021, because you could potentially have your guarantee removed. Um, if Ofgem sends you an email asking for additional information at any point during the period from stage one to stage three, supply it. It could be anything. They can ask for anything. Um, you could have your guarantee revoked. And finally, if the final heat use for the system is substantially different or materially different to what you stated at stage one, the... Um, guarantee could be revoked. So if you originally put in that it's going to be heating a care home and then you finally put in that it's going to actually be heating some farm buildings, the chances are you'll have your uh, guarantee revoked. So try to, again, try to be as accurate as you can at stage one when you're writing about the system. Um, and a big one that people are still falling over with, even two, two and a bit years after planning, the planning um, requirement was introduced by Ofgem, you need to upload a letter from the local authority at stage one, as you do at stage three, to say that either planning permission has been granted for your system, and it's not for the building, it's for the heat pumps themselves, so it must refer to the heat pump, and it must refer to it being a ground or water source heat pump, or a letter from the local authority saying that uh, planning is not required and your system is exempt. Just putting in something that says this is, uh, this is permitted development, it falls under building regulation, is not acceptable. So the message is as soon as you've got planning or planning exemption for your system and you've got all of the above, so you know how big your heat pump's going to be, 
and you know what it's going to be providing heat for, get your tariff guarantee application in. If right now you don't have planning for your heat pump, get onto the local authority as soon as you can because you can't submit stage one without that documentation. Those are, so hopefully that's explained the stages and what you need at each stage. Um, so as being said at the start, we're opening the floor now to questions. Uh, we will take whatever questions you've got. Hopefully we can answer, but we don't have all the answers, uh, but we can collect anything in and potentially take it back to Bayes to um, raise it with them further. Thanks very much, Laura. Thank you, Bean. And we've got some questions come in and I think uh, let's deal with some from Roger Macklin first. Um, the question was, is uh, independent, independent of the overall project or the client? It just says, and oh, well, I can read it to you actually. So there is actually a document that Ofgem have produced. It's called the Guide to um, Tariff Guarantees, uh, which is on the Ofgem website. Um, so basically, uh, let me just find this. Um, one second. Uh, right, so it just says financial claims must be verified and supported by a report from an independent auditor who is not a connected person. That means anybody connected to the applicant and or the investors. Okay. And is the financial, is it that financial clause is for the technology or for the whole project? It says it's for the whole project. Complete construction of the proposed project. Okay. Uh, and what would you recommend if the commissioning date slips? Mm, I would I would get in touch with Ofgem as soon as you can because you'll have a a person who has been assigned. Um, they'll be on the bottom of the emails. So as soon as you know that there might be a slippage in commissioning date, I would get in touch with them with your RHI reference number and your org number and get that in early so that they can deal with Excellent. it. Excellent. Okay. And then uh, Chris, 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 just one more thing on that. Um, in the, with the commissioning date slippage, uh, if because of the current situation with massive delays on sites, that slippage is going to take you beyond the 31st of, uh, beyond the potential extension to TG2, then you would be looking at the transition to TG3. And the transition to TG3, of course, comes with the pain of the digressions that we have seen both in April and the one that's coming up on the 1st of July. So it's slippage on, um, slippage on commissioning dates. If it's a minor slippage, you, know, you may be able to accommodate it with the existing TG2. If it's a significant slippage, the, uh, as things stand, the only route open might be transition to TG3, but that comes with the loss of income because it will almost certainly include uh, a migration to the tariffs that are in place at the time when the TG3 is awarded. Thanks, Bean. Uh, so a couple of related questions, one from David Kemp and one from Mandy Howley. Can tariff guarantees be secured on projects that have already started to be installed? And the second part is, can tariff guarantees be applied to legacy installs trying to get onto the RHI where much of the financial close won't be available or relevant for the entire project? Uh, yes, yeah, so the answer to the first two questions is yes. Um, I've got a few going through at the moment where A, they were expected to commission by the end of March and because of COVID they couldn't, so we got a tariff guarantee in for them instead. So yeah, absolutely, if you've got a system that hasn't yet commissioned but is in process, yes, you can get a tariff guarantee sorted. Second question is, um, for retrofit, so say your heat pump was installed six years ago um, and you're just going through the process, yes, you can get your tariff guarantee in for something that has been installed ages ago. Um, so what was the last bit of the question, Chris? Uh, so the, I'll read the whole thing. Can tariff guarantees be applied to legacy installs trying to get onto the RHI yeah. where much of the financial close info won't be available or relevant for the entire project? It might actually not be relevant because, uh, well, in fact, if if it's a legacy project that's already been installed and commissioned, you should just be able to go straight for an RHI full application without tariff guarantees are only really for stuff that hasn't yet been commissioned. Okay. Um, 
So one question from Edward Howes, do you need a signed installation contract as part of stage two? Mm, it doesn't say that. It just says you just, it's, it, stage two is all about financial close. So you could have a signed installer um, contract and the, the independent person, the independent finance person or accountant could use that as evidence to prove that funds are available. But there's probably other routes, but often I'm not being prescriptive about what that route is other than to say it's got to be an independent person who signs it off. Excellent. Okay. So I've got one question from David Kemp, which he's labelled for the ministry, but maybe we can add some value in the meantime. How are shared loop GSHP systems to be dealt with in relation to tariff guarantees? We have multiple smaller sub 100 kilowatt shared collectors and avoid digression, but no tariff guarantee or redesign in anything to be 100 kilowatts plus get tariff guarantees but get stung with a 20% reduction. Uh, so he's concerned there about some uh, of his clients uh, being caught really between being too uh, small for tariff guarantees, but not wanting to push the project above to uh, avoid digression. Yeah, that, that, that's, a, uh, <laughs> that's a tricky one. I mean, that is effectively the rock and the hard place that we're now in. Um, either you accept that you must complete by the 31st of March, as it stands, as things stand today, by the 31st of March 2021, and uh, and and uh, and commission under 100 kilowatts, no tariff guarantee because it doesn't apply, uh, or if you've got a project which now you fear you cannot commission by the 31st of March 2021, your only option is a tariff guarantee, and that now almost certainly means that you would be subject to the cumulative 28% digression, which will be in place on the 1st of July. So um, I'm afraid <laughs> it, is, it is very much rock and hard place. Now, clearly, these are all messages that we have fed back into the ministry already. So in our submission, and I don't know how many people on the call uh, on, on the webinar made submissions against the uh, stakeholder notice, um, but, you know, clearly all of these points <laughs> we have made absolutely loud and clear to the ministry. And this is part of our ongoing engagement to, to still get a, uh, a straight extension to the uh, non-domestic RHI if it's, still a possible, if it's still possible. And whilst they're still talking and they're still asking questions, we must assume that it's still possible. It's a hell of a long shot, I think. But uh, because they said they don't want to continue to support technologies that they don't want to support. I mean, there's all sorts of arguments, but the longer the COVID delays go on, the greater our chances of getting something. But, uh, but it's, um, yeah, it's still, a, still a very much a long shot. So that's wrapped up the questions that we have in the chat for the moment. So just one final call. If, if anybody, has anybody got any final questions? Okay, Chris. Uh, Michael Firth sent a private message, but I think he wanted it publicly. Michael Firth, I think you sent a message to Roger privately. Uh, okay, so I've got the question now. If at stage one, the project is planning exempt, but you later have to install it in an area site that does need planning permission, can you submit the planning approval at that stage? That's from Michael. Um, there is actually something in the um, document about uh, if planning changes. So if, um, again, I mean, at, at stage three, you have to submit your planning permission again. So uh, if for any reason that originally you said if the local authority said actually this is planning exempt and then something changes and all of a sudden it does need a planning permission, um, you would have to speak to Ofgem as quickly as possible as with the commissioning gate slippage. But if you are making a material change to the address that the system is gonna be installed at, that will probably result in your tariff guarantee notice being revoked. So that's why I'm saying at the start, you need to be sure that um, the address and the size of the heat pump is as accurate as possible. Um, yeah, I hope that answers the question. Okay, so we've got no more questions in the chat now, so I'll just put one final call out. Anybody got any final questions? Um, well, I, what I would say to uh, anybody who, who has questions or who has uh, projects with questions that 
uh, they, they'd rather not air in public, um, please do um, follow up with us. The uh, contact email addresses are on the screen at the moment. Um, if you've got projects that you think could do us some help from the trade, to the trade bodies, um, please do talk to us. Uh, and, and if we can assist you either with our own direct contacts into the ministry or to Ofgem, um, we will do our level best to, uh, to do that. So, um, so please feel free to contact us direct uh, if you wish to discuss particular projects. Okay. Okay. Excellent. So um, just some uh, nice comments from folk thanking us for the useful information. So that's always lovely to hear. Uh, so Laura, you got any final comments? Uh, no, just to reiterate from Bean, obviously there is uh, a lot of uncertainty, but please do get in touch with us if you have any questions. We're really happy to try and help where we can. Um, and yeah, that's it really. Okay, thank you very much everybody. Have a great day. Thank you.